Dia the Palm House is the more modern Princess of Wales Conservatory, filled with plants from tropic and desert regions. Right now, though, the team are making space for one of the highlights of the winter calendar, the annual Orchid Festival. Running through February and into March, it would attract thousands of visitors every day. And with just one week until it opens, Conservatory's manager, Scott, is checking on progress. All right, guys, how's it going? The Orchid Festival's been going on for 25 years now. So it's great to bring the visitors in at this time of the year and really wow their senses. It's one of the largest plant families in the world, over 25,000 species, so around 10% of the world's known plants are orchids. Here at Kew, we've been collecting orchids since the 1770s which is very soon after the gardens was actually created. So we've got a very extensive and old collection. For the month of the show, nearly 10,000 extra plants are brought in to bulk up the displays. Each has to be checked for pests and disease before going on display. Luckily, the conservatory's team are helped by an army of 100 orchid-loving volunteers, like Henk, a master florist who has created arrangements for the Ritz and Fortnum and Mason. At the moment, we're um, mossing plants, so we've got all these lovely bromeliads and orchids, a really sort of mixed selection. And then all these plants together, we will arrange into a beautiful arch. There will be about 250, 300 plants on each arch. I have been a volunteer now at Kew for 10 years, and this is my ninth festival. It's very addictive, and I just spend basically three weeks full-time doing orchids. It just grows on you, and there's such a good team spirit. Looking nice, yeah. <laughs> the arches may be dramatic, but for the centerpiece, Scott and the team have come up with their biggest idea to date, a 15-foot high volcano covered in orchids and set in the middle of a pond. Horticulturist Nick is the one marooned with a trowel. Doing it surrounded by water, so you always have to watch where you're stepping, because um, it can just be one step backwards and you're in the pond. Uh, I think this will be the first and last time I build a volcano. <laughs> I think I'll leave that to nature to do the volcanoes. <laughs> With the volcano to finish and thousands of plants still to position, the team are really up against it to hit the deadline in just one week. Morning, guys. Morning, Scott. How's it going? All good, all good. Yeah. We've had a few late evenings, but everyone's really come together and really pulled it through and finished it off on time, so great stuff. And sure enough, Scott and the team, along with nearly 10,000 new plants, are ready for the great British public, just in time. The colours are just absolutely stunning. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, is this real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Come all the way from Salisbury and Wiltshire, it was worth the trip. The festival is dotted with things that reflect this year's Indonesian theme. Towering above it all is Scott's volcanic centerpiece. Items that we make that are new every year, we're always a little bit concerned about and a bit worried of how it's going to work out, but actually, it's probably worked out slightly better than I imagined this. Amazing. <laughs> Is anything going to erupt now? Only flowers, right? 
The volcano itself is made up of moth orchids. You've also got some, uh, some cambrias as part of the display. But there's also bromeliads, anthuriums, other foliage plants as well, just to try and give that erupting feel of, of a volcano. The eruption of colour isn't only being provided by the flowers. Great. Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Hank is enjoying almost as much attention as the plants. Are you always this uh, I always look colourful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have my hair sort of done tiger um, because we have the Sumatran tiger in the show. Colourful is the old Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, there was a picture in the Times this morning of me, and there was an undertitle saying, The gardeners are upstaging the orchids. <laughs> Try as he might, even Hank can't compete with his own magnificent orchid arches. Last year we had a marriage proposal underneath one of these arches, so it's nice to have this orchid festival story tied into someone's personal story as well. Visitors can also learn about unusual varieties like Vanda orchids, which grow hanging from trees rather than in the soil. It's quite weird to think that, that this actually sort of takes up nutrients and sort of lives off moisture that drips down and then still makes these quite big sort of blousy flowers. They are stunning. It's, I think it's probably one of my favourite orchids. The festival may only be here for a few glorious weeks before it's dismantled, but thousands of people can escape the cold outside in a warm and very welcome splash of winter colour. We come every year, we've been for the last, I don't know, 10 years. I think the best orchid festival that I've seen so far here, it really is excellent. The first weekend of the Orchid Festival gets off to a great start. 